He doesn't let his disability set limitations on him. And even though they're skeptics, he perseveres and he exceeds, he thrives, which is awesome. <laughs> he obviously, you know, isn't like many other people, just the way that he is socially, the way that he interacts with a lot of people. So the fact that he was able to come into this climbing gym and work with our coaches and work with our team and move from being a brand new novice climber to essentially a you know, V10 plus climber today, it's just insane to see that growth. I don't think I've seen anybody in the five years that I've been here that has gone from zero to 60 like he has in the past few years. Joshua was born in Washington State, 2000, and he was a very friendly, outgoing baby. It wasn't until two and a half, uh, three years old, I noticed he wasn't speaking as much as the other kids his age, but he was doing other things that were more advanced than kids that age. Like he was really good with puzzles, and I noticed that he knew where all the states were. So I wasn't too concerned, but then when he was three, a little over past three years old, I said, maybe I better take him to the doctor. And they referred me to a neurologist because they said he's not speaking as much as he should. The neurologist diagnosed him with autism and it was devastating because we didn't know what the future was going to hold for him. Initially I had Josh in, because uh, my background's in wrestling and judo and jiu-jitsu, so obviously I had him doing that. I should have seen the signs, like this particular club had, you know, was in a warehouse building at a very high ceiling and he was far more interested in climbing the rope than he was in doing jiu-jitsu. He would literally climb up the walls. There was like a little bit of a of a molding on the wall and he would grab a hold of the molding and climb halfway up the wall and, and the instructor would come down and tell him to get off the wall. Eventually I came to the realization that it wasn't his autism, it was he didn't like jujitsu. You know, don't make assumptions about, you know, if Josh was struggling with something, don't just assume it's just because of his autism. You're forced to be heavily focused as a competitive climber. So you can't be super distracted and, and being affected by, you know, the ambient noise and all that stuff. You gotta be very focused. And that's obviously something with with, with autism is a, is, is a real, it, it's just an inherent challenge for people with autism. And it, he's very affected by, you know, all the external noises and stuff like that. He has to tune out the noises I'm sure the lights and the people around him, which is not easy for him to do. So today's competition is a red point competition. Your goal is to try to get the highest possible score you can. They have a total of 50 problems on the wall. Your top five problems are what makes up your score. One through 50, one's the easiest, 50 is the hardest. You know, at the beginning of the competition, Joshua will basically just do the easy ones as a way of warming up. You try to zero in on what are the hardest five problems you can do. So we'll be figuring out, you know, as he attempts the problems, where that sort of sweet spot is. I hope he just tries his hardest, has fun with it, and that will show in how well he places in the competition, but mostly just have fun. Joshua's, uh, he's gotten, I believe, 41 through like 43 at this point. He's finished those. And I'm pretty confident he can finish number 48, but, you know, right now he doesn't feel that confident about it, you know, because he's done several attempts on it and he's struggled on it. But I, I think if he keeps at it, you know, I think he can finish number 48 and that should put him in a good position, you know, when, when, when the scoring comes in. confident that Joshua could do number 48. Um, he just had to get to the point where he believed he could do it. I, I think he finally overcame that sort of mental obstacle he was having and he just went out there and tried his hardest and he was able to finish it. So I'm really proud of him. came 
in second place. He persevered, and I'm really proud of him. Yeah, Joshua did really well today. Uh, honestly, he was only one point out of first, so really this is a good day for him, and uh, he put in his best effort, and that's, you know, that's all you can really ask at the end of the day. I hope people learn not to judge people based on their disability and what they're capable of, because so many people, if you say autism, they just, this is the way autistic people are. He may sound or act or learn in a different way, but he's not any less of a person, because a lot of people treat people with disabilities differently. They're not given very much respect and very discriminated against grit because they can't always defend themselves. So I think it's our job to, if they don't have a voice, for everyone else to speak up on their behalf. He inspires me to not give up, you know, no matter what life throws at you, you got to keep going and do your best. And you could even thrive, you know. What does rock climbing mean to you? It, like, it motivates me that, because my mom and papa believe in me. 